Lux Radio Theater. Tonight and every Monday night at this time, Lux Radio Theater presents, for your entertainment, the finest in radio drama. Tonight we bring you The Night Run by Lester Powell. The Night Run is a tense, taut drama of a well-to-do alcoholic who knows that he dare not drink because in his cups he has a terrible urge to commit murder. Yet this middle-aged man gets involved with a young girl and soon they are celebrating their train journey with champagne. With every drink he takes, Angela's danger becomes more acute. Stringfellow's emotional battle to save himself and to protect the girl develops into a climax that is as true to life as it is frightening. Listen in a few moments to The Night Run, produced for Lux Radio Theatre by Michael Silver. And now, Act One of tonight's Lux Radio Theatre presentation, The Night Run. Now, Miss, she'll be in about nine minutes. Oh, good. I'd like a single ticket, please. First or second? Uh, first, I think. Here. Is that right? Uh, not a shilling, please. Oh, sorry. Do you think I'll be able to get a sleeper? Oh, very doubtful. They all get filled up at Plymouth, mostly reservations. But sometimes there are cancellations, aren't there? Well, sometimes, yes. But uh, we wouldn't know about them here in Newton Abbott. What you'd best do is go along and see the sleeping car attendant when you get on the train. Are you the sleeping car attendant? Yes, miss, I am. Are they all taken? Yes, miss. Oh. Could you tell me whether a Mr. Stringfellow has one? He got on a trim. Yes, miss. Mr. Stringfellow's with us. Could you tell him I'm here? Oh, he's asleep, miss. He left order. He's going to be disturbed till we get a pass. Oh, but it's very important. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. If a person leaves order, oh, he's not... Here. Here. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, well, I am. All right. What name shall I tell him? Angela Holmes. You wait right here, miss. I'll tell him if he's away. Yes, yes, what is this? There's a young lady asking for you, Mr. Stringfellow. A lady? Name of Angela O. In the corridor. Well, I'll be. No, no, you. You better ask her to come in. Yeah, uh, ask her to come in. Sorry, I have to disturb you, sir. Oh, that's all right. Uh, and Victor, a uh, cigarette. What is he? Well, no, but uh, calling distance. Oh, I understand, sir. I'll be around. Sorry, there isn't much room. I'll have to stay in bed if you don't mind. That's right. Well, sit, uh, sit over there. It's, it's, uh, it's not very comfortable. This is fine. Uh, all right, then, Mr. Stringfellow. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Victor. I'll call you if we uh, need anything. Or be on our side. Don't worry. Yes, please, I, I would. Thanks. Anyway. Good 
buying for one. I ran out about two hours ago, and I, I couldn't buy any. I didn't have the right coin for the machine. I didn't see you at Plymouth. I got on at Newton Abbott. Oh, did you? Newton Abbott's closer to where I live than Plymouth. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> isn't this stupid? I mean, isn't it terribly stupid? Is it? Well, yes, it is. All day long, ever since I decided to come away with you, I've been rehearsing what I'd say to you. Now I'm here, I... I, I can't think of a single word. You decided to come away with me? Nobody knows I've run away from home. Not yet. The heavy sleepers in our family sneaked out the back door. And I got a lift on a milk lorry into Newton Abbott. I'm terrified I'd lost the train. My watch was wrong. Wrong. Couldn't you get out of that bed? I feel as though I'm sick visiting. As though I ought to be handing you grapes. Angela, you've just handed me about the biggest shock I've ever had in my whole life. Yes, I thought you'd be surprised. I, uh... <clears throat> Angela, look, I'd, uh, I'd better get dressed. Why? <laughs> Please, if you just, uh... All right. Sing out when I can come back. I'll be just outside. You may come in now. What's going on? I mean, what are you doing here? I told you. I'm coming to London with you. And you left home? Yes. This means that you visualize... Uh, visualize it as something permanent? Well, nothing very permanent, is it? You're an amazing girl, Angela. You really are. I know. I'm awfully ordinary. Ordinary? You meet a man at a party, and the next night you jump a train to be with him. Ordinary. <laughs> a 19-year-old girl. Well, perhaps not ordinary. Natural, though. It was to me. After what happened last night. You, you haven't said you're pleased to see me. Do I have to say it? Women like these things, you know. It's not enough for them to know. They have to be told. I'm delighted to see you, Angela. Good. Kiss me, please. Not much of a bridal suite, is it? We'll get Victor to liven it up. Victor! Hey, Victor! Yes, sir? Uh, come here a minute, will you? What's it going to be, Angela? I don't mind. Anything you like. Okay, Victor. Whiskey. Well, I'd uh, have to charge you a bit over the odds, Mr. Stringfellow. You, you understand, I don't you? What with it being a private service and all? Oh, anything you say. And bring some soda water as well, if you have any. Right. <laughs> I don't think he approves. No, well, you can overcome anything but money. Tell me something. Uh-huh. Why did you run away from me? Uh, he said I did that. Barney said you'd arrange to stay another week with him. And you changed your mind and took off right after meeting me. Oh. You've been talking to Barney about me, have you? Well, I rang him up this morning, didn't he tell you? No. Hmm, the soul of discretion. Did you tell him that you were going to run away with me? No, I didn't decide till after I'd spoken to him. Come in. Where's that when he's here on the bed? Oh, uh, please, yes. You've uh, got a bottle opener there for the soda. Shall I settle up with you now? Oh, no, I'll do it later, Steve. Anything else you want to? Uh, no, thanks. No, everything's fine. Oh. How's that? Huh? Lots of soda, please. I can't bear the taste of whiskey. <laughs> there. How's that? Mm. A little more soda, please. All right. Mm, fine. 
We're still not drinking? No. What happens when you drink? Well, I, uh, I get emotionally disturbed, for one thing. I'd rather like to see you like that. You wouldn't like me when I'm drunk. I would. I'm sure I would. Well, we won't risk it. You become homicidal, raging with a lust to kill? What made you decide to come with me? The things you told me last night, they affected me more deeply than you knew. Oh, I knew they affected you. That's why I said them. I wanted you to be, uh, involved. The trouble is, I didn't see beyond that. You didn't see that you were turning my head? Must be an easy thing to do. No, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. Silly cheap crack. Actually, I'm rather hard-boiled. This is the first time it's happened. Why? I don't delude myself. I, I'm not a young girl's dream of love. I'm, I'm pretty dreary, especially when I'm not drinking. I, I have no, uh, no drive. I'm timid, unsure of myself. I, I don't shine. And I can't get through to people. I can't communicate with them. You communicated last night. That's the effect you had on me. You lit me up. Were you bolted for cover? Yes. Why? Don't you want to be lit up, as you put it? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Here? Look here. Angela, I've been in psychoanalysis for three years. Yes, I know. But you know nothing about me. You don't know what you'd be taking on. You, you can't let... Oh, yes, I do. You told me enough last night. The dark and dreadful things that have happened to you made it all clear. And I couldn't bear the idea of your being on your own without anyone to take care of you. You're so... You're so defensive. I overcolored what I told you last night. In a bit for your sympathy. I often do that when I meet a woman who attracts me. You mean you made those things up? Yes, that's right. I made them up. You didn't. Barney confirmed them. Oh, don't you think... No, no, it's all right. I can take a couple without it affecting me. All right. Just two, then. Here you are. Thanks. tell you I was an alcoholic when I was only 17. You did? You were expelled from school, boy. I was in my first home before I was 20, getting dried out. Yes, you told me about that, too. What are you, Angela? Frustrated Florence Nightingale? No, I'm not. Well, what are you, then? I'm in love. Why the look? <laughs> Come on. Isn't going to be as ghastly as all that. It's going to be fun too, you know. At nineteen, you're pretty smart, dead sharp. <laughs> May I have the second drink, though? You feel all right? I feel wonderful. You don't feel a, 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 an attack coming? I off? feel marvelous, absolutely marvelous. All right. What are you pressing the bell for? Victor. Oh, what do we want with Victor? Oh, I know my own weakness. That's why you think I'm sharp. A fool is someone who doesn't know his own weakness. And if I have custody of this bottle, you'll wheedle another drink out of me, and then another, and another, and another. You mind, sir? Victor, would you be very kind and put this bottle in the kitchen for us, or wherever you keep things? Oh, I thought you wanted a whole bottle. We've changed our minds. But we'll pay for it just the same. Of course we'll pay. Right. Keep it safe. And don't give it back to us till we get to Paddington. <laughs> These things look crazy. He may be right. Yes. He may well be. <sighs> oh, this is wonderful. 
wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. May I lie down? May I lie down, please? Hmm? I, I feel a bit tired. Well, of course, of course. Hey, let me smooth out the pillow for you. Put the bed straight. going on? What's the catch? I, I, I don't know what you mean. Do you think I'm a fool or something? No, of course not. Angela, I've been on the receiving end of this one so often I'm an expert. I can spot it coming a mile off. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I really don't. You're, you're frightening me. You talked to Barney this morning, didn't you? You had a, a long conversational chat about me, didn't you? Yeah. So, of course, he told you that I'm the string fellow of string fellow radio and television. You know I'm worth two and a half million, don't you? To your money, are you? Ah, happens all the time. That's the story of my life. Behind me, there stretches a host of departed friends whose, whose pockets I've filled on hard luck stories. There was almost a wife whose eyes went misty with sterling signs when she spoke to me of love. And a breach of promise action which set up a record. I have a pedigree as a sucker, Angela. They don't come any better. But I told you. I'm in love with you. Well, so were they. The higher the take, the more ardent the affection. You don't really mean this. You can't. Tell me, what does your father do for a living? He's a boat builder. Does he make a lot of money? No, not very much. Enough to live on. And you? Have you a large private income by any chance? No, no, I haven't. I work at a kennel, I told you last night. What's the technique here, then? How does it work? Will your father be waiting at Paddington? No, no. He knows nothing about it. Oh, then I'll get hit with a heavy writ in a couple of days' time. Eh? Is that the pitch sued for luring an underage girl out of the custody of her parents? Is that the angle? Tell me. Oh, I'd like to know. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, yes. I've seen that one, too. Bitter tears streaming down the face of innocence oh. when I uncover the rotten truth. Oh, go away. Please go away. Oh, I'm going. Don't worry about that. I'm taking evasive action. You know, I sensed something like this was being cooked up. I, I sensed it last night when you walked into Barney's house and turned those eyes on me. That's why I cut my stay short in Devon, if you want to know. It's Barney and on this, too. Does he get a cut? Oh, please go away. Why not? Barney's the only one of my so-called friends who hasn't had his hands inside my wallet so far. Why should he be any different? <laughs> Where's this place? Exodus. Uh, how long do we stop? Twenty minutes. Good. You getting off, Mr. Streamer? Yeah, only to make a phone call. Said she left home to look after me. 
good. So long as you don't drink, you're not likely to... How old is she? Nineteen, she says. Oh. Well, this is a mess. I know. I'm nearly out of my mind. Is she still on the train? Yes, she's in my sleeper. I, I'm speaking from the station platform. Well, now, look. This is what you must do. Turn the sleeper over to her. Huh? Now, you go to another part of the train and stay there. Uh-huh. Don't go near her till you get to Paddington. You got that? Yes, Paul. Now, then, in the morning, you bring her around here. We'll sit down, all three of us, and try to thrash it out. But keep away from her. Yes. That's uh-huh. a paramount thing. Now, don't go near her till the train stops. Uh-huh. You're in no fit state to cope with emotional excitement. Now, you understand that, don't you? Yeah, yes, Paul, yes. I'll, 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 I'll do what you say. Oh, good. Yeah. You promise me you haven't been drinking tonight? N- no. No, I, I promise I, I haven't touched a drop for a whole month. Can you get any on the train? Uh, no. There isn't a restaurant car. Good. Now, as long as you don't drink, there's no danger. Now, go back to the train. Take a sleeping pill, and don't move till you're in London. All right. Uh, uh, Thank you, Paul. I'll meet the train at Paddington. It doesn't matter how early it is, and we can bring the girl back to the house for breakfast. You're terribly good to me, Paul. I I, I don't know what I'd do without you. I'm not only your psychiatrist, I'm your friend. Just do what I say, and we'll work something out. I, 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 I don't want... I don't want to attempt another murder. You won't. Good night. I need a drop to set me up. I, I told you, I haven't been well. I need a booster. Well, go on. What are you waiting for? Get it. Mr. Stringfellow, I've been on this job a long time. I've met a lot of people and served them a lot of drinks. I know about people and their drinking habits. How they drink. Why they drink. Just get the bottle, will you? The vast majority of people drink to be sociable, to make themselves feel good. But a few drink because they got to, because they're ill. And you're one of them, Mr. Stringfellow. Uh, I recognized that the moment I saw you with your hand round that bottle. I'll pay you whatever you want. You can have the bottle back when we get to Paddington. When you're no longer my responsibility. Look, it's my bottle. No, it is not. You haven't paid for it yet. But I, 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 I want to pay for well, it. Well, I don't want to sell it to you. And I'm not. That's all there is to it. Who do you think you are? Some important idiots. Charming man is some of these gentlemen. Hello. Not asleep yet? No. It's 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 gonna be all right, Angela. Don't be don't be frightened. Are you frightened? Yes, I am. Little? Well, I, I, I just talked to Paul. I, I, I phoned him from the platform the next time. What did he say? That I was to go to another part of the train and not come near you till we get to Paddington. Is that what you're going to do? Uh, it's for the best. You'll be all right by yourself, won't you? I suppose so. Uh, Victor will look after you. I gave him a large tip at Plymouth. Did you mean those horrible things you said? Uh... I don't know. But once I don't mean yes. It's, it's a part of what ails me, you see. I have this deep-seated fear that people only want me for my money. That's common among rich people, isn't it? Yes, but I have it in an exaggerated form. <laughs> I have everything in an exaggerated form, Angela. But when you're nice, when you're not worked up, you're kind. 
passenger jet. And something unexpected happens. This fear takes over. I get horribly suspicious. I start looking for signs. I see things under beds that aren't there. It's called paranoia. But I don't want your money. Really, I don't. I love you. I only want to be with you and take care of you. Nothing else. Honestly, there isn't. Please believe me. I... I want to believe you. More than anything, I, I need someone like you. I know that. It, it's my only hope of s salvation. Someone I can trust and be happy with. Be patient with me, then. Give me the chance to learn. I've got a lot to learn. I know that. Please give me a chance. I'd feel much better if you could stay with me. I'd be able to sleep then. No, no, I, I can't do that. Paul's right. I'll, I'll see you when we get to Paddington. I'll, I'll uh, come along and fetch you. You won't run away from me again, will you? No. No, I won't do that. Promise. I promise. Oh, kiss me goodnight. No, no. I, I, I can't do that. You try to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Is the seat taken? No. Help yourself. Going to London? Uh, yes. Long journey. Y yes. Especially at night. Everything's longer at night. Not so bad if you have a sleeper, though. No. And you have to book well in advance on this run. I was unlucky. I've got a sleeper. Oh. Couldn't sleep, then? No. Some people can't, you know. Even if they stuff themselves full of sleeping pills. I can, though. Sleep anywhere. <laughs> Sign of an easy conscience, I suppose. Look, do you want to talk? Well, I don't know. Don't you? I'm easy either way. Well, I'm interested in people. My worst enemy couldn't accuse me of lack of curiosity. People are my business, you might say. My name's George Ems, by the way. I sell machinery to farmers. How do you do? What do you do for a living? I don't. My father left me two and a half million pounds. <whistles> two and a half million? <laughs> well, you won't have many problems, will you? Actually, Mr. Ems... I've got the worst problem a man can possibly have. And I've got it right here and now. Oh? What's that, then? How to stop myself committing a murder. Well, you know, we all feel we'd like to do someone in it one time or another. <laughs> we start thinking of ways and means, even. Working out a plot. But when it comes it to... It isn't the... like that at all, Mr. Elms. It isn't like that at all. This isn't fantasy. It's fact. I... I don't want to murder her, but I'm terrified that I'm going to. You said you were interested in people, didn't you? Well, this is people, Mr. Ems. This happens. People murder one another all the time. Yes, yes, I know that. Or doesn't it impinge on you? You think selling agricultural machinery shelters you from the harsh facts of life? Now, look, there's no need to be like that about it, you know. I'm sorry. I'd like to talk to somebody about it. All right. Go ahead and talk. Will you listen? Will you really listen? Of course I will. Very few people can, you know. I can. I do it all the time. Well, I was expelled from school for trying to murder another boy. That was the start. How did you do it? I tried to strangle him. I nearly did it, too. Why? Jealousy. He was my best friend. I admired him because he could do all the things I couldn't. How old were you? Seventeen. Were there any comebacks? I mean, you were prosecuted, weren't you? Uh, no. Why not? <laughs> my father was a millionaire. Oh, I see. He could fix anything, provided it cost only money. When it came to love or affection, sympathy or understanding, he was bankrupt, flat broke. 
You didn't get on with him. I hated him. And I loved him, too. It was crazy. After he died, I wept for two whole days. What about your mother? My mother. Well, she ran off with a band leader when I was five. It was a fashionable thing for rich women to do in those days, and my mother was always very fashionable. She still is, for that matter. Well, you still see her, then? Oh, once a year for two weeks. She lives in Munich now. She's married to a nuclear scientist. That's the fashion in her set today. <laughs> band leader to scientist in 20 years. So, you were 17 when you tried to kill someone. How old are you now? 27. Well, then, I don't see that you've got all that much to worry about. Something that happened once, ten years ago? It's happened since. Oh. Twice. Once when I was 21, I tried to strangle a girl in a car. Then, two years ago, I had a go at my wife. And your father hushed those up, too, did he? The girl in a car, yes, but... He was dead by the time I tried it on my wife. I hushed that up myself. It was included in the divorce settlement. What you're saying is that all this means that you have homicidal tendencies. Well, what would you say it means? Well, it seemed normal enough to me. <laughs> been talking quite normally. I've been watching your eyes and your lips while you've been doing it. You can detect somebody who isn't quite 16 ounces to the pound by the eyes and the twist of the lips. You've studied abnormal psychology. Oh, I'm fairly good at summing people up. I've had to in my job. No, I'd say you were basically a mild sort of person. Not very sure of yourself. A bit timid. Yes. I'm all those things. Except when I get emotionally upset. And then I want to destroy her. I want to kill have you had anything done about it? Medical treatment? Psychological treatment? Oh, yes. I've had the works. My father had me shut up three times in three mental homes. Expensive mental homes, I need hardly say. The very best. You see. Well, now, what's the immediate danger? You said something about it being here and now. She's in my sleeper. At the back of the train. And she upset you? She dynamited me. Now, the usual way. I met her last night at a party given by a friend I was staying with in Denton. She's 19, pretty, enticing as a peach. When I first clapped eyes on her, my head started to sing. You know how that happens sometimes? Have you um, told her about yourself? Yes. Uh, except the murder attempts, of course. I didn't want to scare her. I let it on a bit too thick, though. By the time the evening was out, I'd fallen for it. <laughs> I was emotionally disturbed. Why didn't you run away, then? I did. But she followed me. She got on the train at Newton Abbott. Yes, you have got a problem. It'll be all right if I can hang out till we get to Paddington, if, if I can keep away from her. I phoned my psychiatrist from next to him. He said I was to take her to see him in the morning and... It'll be all right if I don't go near her uh, until we get to London. Well, all right, then you stay here. That's easy enough, isn't it? Only if you... you help me. How can I help you? Well, keep me here. No matter what I say or do, don't let me out of this compartment. E even if I have to go to the lavatory, you come with me. Will, will you do that for me? Certainly. That's what you want. Thank you. How you feel it now? All right. Better since I've talked about it. Not um, disturbed. So long as I don't think about her. Well, we'll have to keep your mind off her, won't we? It's not as easy as selling agricultural machinery. No. Uh, not that I ever found selling agricultural machinery easy. You play cards? No, I'm, I'm sorry. That wouldn't do. I wouldn't be able to concentrate. Pity. What about a quiet read, then? I've got some magazines. No, I'm, I'm not in the mood for that, I'm afraid. I never can read on a train anyway. I know. I've got a bottle of scotch in my briefcase. No, no, thank you very much. What's the matter? Don't you drink? Yes, yeah, I, I drink, but... My psychiatrist told me not to. He, he was very insistent. Well, hedge shrinkers aren't infallible, are they? 
This one is. It has to be. They work on theory, though, don't they? They're not practical men of affairs. He could be wrong about this, you know. A couple of drinks could be the very thing for you. I find it works wonders when I'm pinned up. Not that I'm a heavy drinker, mind you. Everything in moderation, but when I'm tense, you know, worried about the sale, for instance, I find that a couple of whiskeys unwinds me, irons out the creases. Do you think so? Do you really think it would do the trick? Yes, I do. I'm sure of it. Look here. Old bottle. Ah, uh, it'll send you off to sleep. That's what you need. Something to knock you right out. Then you'll be in London before you know it and the problem's solved. Believe me, it's a thing to do. Suppose it doesn't knock me out. Well, I'll be here. I'll be taking care of you. I won't let you out. Sometimes I... I get violent when I'm drunk. Well, I expect I'll be able to handle that. Used to do a bit of boxing. No, I don't think you'll get out of here, however violent you get. Well, all right. Good man. Still on the train? Why, well, yes, Mr. Farley. No way. He went up front after we left Ashford. Are you sure? Well, his luggage is still here, is it? Please go and check. Well, I've got things to do. You're not the only person in the sleeping car, you know, Miss. If you will go and look, I'll give you this. <clears throat> All right. You want me to give him a message? No. Just see if he's still on the train. Okay. And then give this bill a rest, lady. Where does Dorothy have? You see? It's working. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's working. This is the end of the bottle. End of the bottle. <laughs> Down the hatch, then. Oh, it's a... Sleepy yet? Yeah. And you're completely relaxed, aren't you? <laughs> Wonderful. Why don't you put your feet up? <laughs> yes, why don't I? Nurse M's. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Emergency ward 10. <laughs> Wake me with a light little boy, Becky. I'll do that. Oh. And China tea. China tea with a dash of fresh uh, lemon. Loosen your collar mm. and off you go to bye byes. <sighs> Sleepers, then? No, oh, nothing more than usual, you know. Oh, still, you do see a bit of life in your job. Being a guard, especially on the night run, you just sit here and look at the crates and the parcels. Yeah, well, I'm going to grab a bit of kip. That's okay with you, Tom? Sure. There's a couple of empty compartments up the back. Uh, even I have things to do, For your pleasure. Give me a chance to stretch my legs. Uh, 
What, what, what's that? Train slowing. What, what for? Waiting. Last stop before Paddington. I was asleep. Oh, were you? <laughs> you were snoring loud enough to drown out the London Symphony Orchestra. What are you, what are you doing? Get in my suitcase off the rack. What do I look like I'm doing? Well, why? We're not at Paddington yet. I'm not going to Paddington. I get off at Reading. Why? Why, for Pete's sake? Because I live there. But you said you'd take care of me. You, you promised you gave your solemn word. I got you off to sleep, didn't I? That must be the better part of a bottle of scotch, too. I'm awake now. Well, go to sleep again. Well, I can't. I'm wide awake. Get your head down, then. Make it if. I can't. For Pete's sake, don't go and leave me. You can't do that. You can't. Exactly. I'll pay you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hundred quid. Oh, don't a hundred quid just to go to Paddington. One more station. I have to see the important clients in the morning. A lot depends on it. I'll pay you more. Anything you like. Look, look. I'll, I'll write the check now. You tell me the amount and I'll... What's it now? My checkbook's in my suitcase. My suitcase is in the sleeper with her. I'll tell you what. Uh, come to the sleeper with me. Well, come on. Take your hands off I'll me. I'll pay you anything you like, more than you can make tomorrow, more than you can make in a whole year if you like. Come on. Let go. You can't leave me, you mustn't. You'll have a murder on your... I warned you. You should learn to control yourself. Oh, that's my trouble. Look, it doesn't matter about me. I'm expendable. I'd be better off dead anyway, but think of her, the girl. She's 19 and at the beginning of her life. Don't hit me again. Don't hit me. I'm not going to hit you unless you force me to. It's up to you. Why won't you understand? You did before. You listened. You were sympathetic. Why won't you understand now? What's happened to you? The entertainment's over. I've come to the end of my journey. I'm tired and I've had enough. Entertainment? What are you talking about? Work it out, mate. You're not saying I made it all up, are you? Come to the sleeper with me, please. You can ask her. She'll tell you. She knows the truth about me. That you're going to kill her. No, no. Don't, don't confuse me. She'll tell you who I am about my mental history. You're not mad, son. You haven't got homicidal tendencies. I have. I told you. Three times before I tried to do it. They don't go around blurting it about. I asked for your help. I gave it to you. The better part of a bottle. Come to the sleeper with me. Uh, please. No. It'll only take a few minutes. We'll be in Reading in a few I'll minutes. I'll give you money all you want. No. All right, then. I'm going to enough. You do that. Give her my love. And you read about it in the paper. Oh, get lost. I want Victor. Well, what do you want him for? Where is he? Well, he, he isn't here. Well, he can't him. have got off the train. I, I need him urgently. He's, he, he's going to lock me out. Lock you out? Where is he? For heaven's sake, tell me where is he? I've got to find him. He's off to. He can't be. He's responsible for these sleepers. He can't go up duty before we get to Paddington. Oh, you better move along. You're blocking up the corridor. Where's Victor? Move along then. Oh, no. Oh, no. In a few minutes, you've got to get off. Are you going to? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going on to Paddington. And so am I. We're going to talk to you as a psychiatrist in the morning, aren't we? No, no. But you said you were going to. I've changed my mind. 
psychiatrist. Yes, I know, but... And you told me you always took his advice. You said he was the father you felt you never had. <sighs> you said that if it hadn't been for him... Stop confusing me! Not. I... I want you to get off this train. You've got to get off it. I won't. Not without you. <sighs> Look, I've been drinking. Practically a, a whole bottle of whiskey. I'll look out. You can't. When I get drunk, I want to kill people. It's happened three times before, Angela. You murdered three people? No. No, something happened each time to stop me, but it can't happen here. Not if we're shut up in this little box together. I don't want to. Why won't you understand? Why won't you do what I say and get off the train? No. I'm not going to leave you. Do I have to throw you off? The only way you'll get rid of me. Angela, do it for my sake. If you won't do it for your own, I beseech you. No. You can use force, of course. You can throw me off, but that... I can't throw you off. If I touch you... Curse you! Why don't you understand? I love you. Love, is that all you think about? What does love mean if you're going to force me to kill you? Then lock me up, Angela, probably for the rest of my life. Is that what you want to happen? You and your precious love? I don't believe you'll kill me. Do you want to die? No, of course I then don't. Then get off the train. No. All right. I'll get off myself. Don't leave me. Please. Please don't leave me. If you want to kill me, kill me. Kill me. It doesn't matter. I belong Let me to you. Go. No. I'll hit you. No. <laughs> How did you make me? Are you all right? Did I hurt you very much? It doesn't matter. You'll be all right, aren't you? You're young enough. Things will work out. Don't put me in there. For Pete's sake, don't put me in there. That's the worst possible thing you could do. Ah, come along. A nice, quiet uh, I'm not a drunk. Uh, you said you was. Uh, 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 what, what are you doing? Taking sleeping pills. Uh, give me that bottle. Give it to me. No, I'm confiscating this. I only took two. I need at least four to lock myself out cold. Well... 
You're not knocking yourself cold up, not on this train. Oh. Now, come on. You're going to bed, Mr. Strange. Lock me up. Lock me up. All right. Follow me, then. No. Come on. Don't, don't put me in there. Well, you asked to be locked up, didn't you? But not in there. You'll be all right in there. No, no, no! Now, in you go. Now. <laughs> you get some sleep, Mr. Stringfellow. I'll let you out at Paddington. You'll be all right. Get some sleep now. There you are. Now. Come and lie down. You look exhausted. I tried everything. Nothing worked. Nobody believed me. Come and lie down. All right. This is the way it's got to end.
C-12 gave us a rare old time, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> All in a nice way. Yeah. Good night, Tonight's presentation of The Night Run. You heard Joe Stewartson as Stringfellow and Annabel Linder as Angela. Enns was portrayed by Stuart Brown and Gabriel Bayman played the part of Victor. Others in the cast were Donald Monat and Ian Yule. The Night Run was produced for Lux Radio Theatre by Michael Silver. In just a moment, we'll cross over to the Johannesburg City Hall for a direct broadcast of the finals of the Plascon Talent Show. But first, we would like to thank the makers of Andrew's 18A effervescent salt.